Hello everyone, this is Dr. Jawad. I'm going to answer an email from a viewer. Thank you very much for your email. And that is, please explain the difference between noradrenaline and adrenaline, otherwise known as norepinephrine and epinephrine. But before I do that, if you're new to my channel, thank you for watching. If you haven't done so already, please hit the subscribe button and the bell notification because when I upload videos like this, you'll be first to be notified. Facebook fans, thank you very much. Again, if you like this video, please share with a friend and please hit the like button. And if you want a consultation, please follow the link below. I'll be more than happy to set something up and have a free consultation for about 15 minutes. We could either do it on a phone or we could do it a Zoom call. You can always just talk to Diane. And thank you very much for watching, and I hope you enjoyed the video. So this is Chester, and i got to pick him up. If I don't pick him up, he's going to sit down on my feet and bark. So please bear with me. He's a good boy. So the question is, what is the difference between noradrenaline and adrenaline? So where, where it's produced, it's produced in the adrenal glands, in, the, in particular the adrenal medulla. We have two adrenal glands and they sit on top of the kidneys and that is, those glands help us adapt to stress. And what it is, is that it releases adrenaline or, and noradrenaline, which is your fight, flight, freeze or fawn response. Meaning that fight, okay, are you gonna attack the tiger? Flight, are you gonna run from the tiger? Freeze, are you gonna hide from the tiger? Fawn, are you going to try to convince a tiger not to eat you? Now, when it comes to the adrenaline response, you have noradrenaline and adrenaline. And the similarities between them both, they're both hormones, and they're both released from the adrenal medulla. In addition, they're chemical transmitters, and they're both present in your central nervous system. Now, the main difference between the two is the nor noradrenaline, norepinephrine, okay? It's secreted in the sympathetic nerve endings, whereas epinephrine is not. So how it's produced, they're both considered catecholamines and they start off with amino acid phenylalanine. Now again, you need to, you need to eat a protein source in order to make these uh, hormones. So the phenylalanine consumed from a protein source turns it converts into tyrosine, which converts into L-dopa, which converts with the help of vitamin B6 into dopamine. Now, I'm sure some of you know that dopamine is involved with movement and motivation. And also, it can get burnt out if, if it conditions like with Parkinson's. Now, dopamine, with the help of copper and vitamin C, gets converted to norepinephrine. So norepinephrine, this is part of the, again, this is what happens is in the sympathetic nerve endings. Now, norepinephrine gets converted to epinephrine through a methyl group that's really a methyl donor that's released from methionine, SAM. Okay, so if you look over here, you've got in the first half, it comes down to norepinephrine, and then with the methyl donor from methionine, SAM, norepinephrine turns into epinephrine, which is the final response. The main difference between two, I'm gonna start with epinephrine because epinephrine, I always say this is the powerful one. This is the mega gas pedal. So, it's a hormone secreted by the adrenal medulla, 80% of it. So this is the final stage. Now the function increases blood circulation, breathing, carb metabolism, and also prepares the muscles for exertion. It's synthesized from norepinephrine through the methyl group. It activates both alpha and beta adrenergic fibers. So this is why it's so important because those beta fibers those are equated to the heart, and that will help increase the heart contractibility, heart rate. So the four main effects, it increases the heart rate due to the contractibility. It helps relax the bronchial, so you have a greater exchange of oxygen. So it increases the blood pressure through the vasoconstriction, and it increases blood sugar levels. Why? Because through gluconeogenesis and lipolysis. So this is very powerful. It's longer and it's stronger. So this is why I always say that the final product is epinephrine. So when it comes to norepinephrine, it's still, it's a hormone secreted from the adrenal medulla, but it's 20%. And it's simulated through the sympathetic nervous system. Now the thing is, it's synthesized from dopamine. So it goes dopamine, norepinephrine, and then epinephrine. And the thing is, norepinephrine functions more of a neuro, as a neurotransmitter than actually a hormone. Now, it contains hydrogens attached to the nitrogen base, but here's the thing about norepinephrine. It's, again, it does 
It does activate the alpha and beta fibers, but more the alpha fibers. This is why the epinephrine is more powerful on the heart due to the beta fibers. And so the primary effect is the norepinephrine is to increase the blood pressure through vasoconstriction. So they're both very, very powerful as the adrenal, uh, adrenaline response, but we're always remember, this, always, this is how I always remember it. The epinephrine, if you have an allergy attack, what do they give you? They give you the EpiPen. The EpiPen is full of what? Epinephrine. Through the heart to attack the what? The beta fibers, because the beta fibers are more indicative for the heart rate. Okay, so I hope this helps. If you have any comments, leave them down below or any topics that you want me to, to go over. And you can say goodbye to Chester. I'm going to put Chester down. He does get heavy after a while. So thanks for watching. Take care.